That's not perfect. It takes a long time to run through this. It takes a lot of effort on your part. Psych doctors, stuff like this, you just have to do it. Because there's too much stuff in our brain that keeps us awake and keeps us agitated. Right. Do you use cannabis yourself? Or oh, yes. You do? Oh, yeah. I did four tours in Vietnam up in the rivers. Four? Oh. Yeah. Wow. I did seven years active duty. Uh, I was at critical rate, so they wasn't going to let me out in my four years. So I just said, fine, I'll ship over for two and steal me the money. So I was six years at sea. Uh, amphibious Navy is what they call brown water. That's in next to the shore, up in the rivers. 18 years old, 19 years old, and you know, hey, we were in invincible. But the effects of the war, 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 it wears on you once you get back. The, the issue that we're seeing with cannabis is the access for veterans to get medicine, to get medicinal cannabis to, to help treat the symptoms of PTSD. The most common reason that people use cannabis is for chronic pain. And I think a lot of veterans have uh, chronic pain from their injuries. The veterans should be able to get all their medical treatment and care and medicine through the VA medical system. But they're not able to do that because cannabis is a Schedule One drug, the VA is a federal entity, and therefore it's not available for the veteran, the VA doctors to issue to veterans. You have to understand there's, there's still a great tension mm -hmm. between federal and, and state law. And regardless of what state you're in or whether you're medicinal or recreational, it's still illegal on a federal level. Uh, and that's concerning because there, there really is no safe harbor with respect to, to the federal law. Documentaries have been a personal passion of mine for just about all of my life. But it wasn't until I fell into the world of videography four years ago that I ever dreamt of making my own. However, for the entirety of my short time as an independent producer, I've been obsessed with developing an idea for a documentary series of my own. It's based around a 13 and a half thousand mile search for the soul of modern America on the back of a motorbike a quest to answer the question, what is an American? It's a project I call the Ride for Identity, and one of the driving forces has been my decision to become a US citizen, a process I completed in November 2017 after making America my home for the last 15 years. But back when I was still mulling over the decision itself, I also realized something else. I realized that I actually hadn't seen that much of America, just seven states since I moved here. I felt I had to do something about that. And that's how I came up with the idea to ride around the country on a motorcycle with a bunch of cameras. It was in fact my work on Ridentity that led to the creation of Dr. Watt, the character I developed and voiced that hosts the Test Lab show but it's our joint botanical ignorance that began this particular journey. You see, Vets Grow started life as a show called What Learns How, and it was a simple concept. Throw up a grow tent in my garage and film the process of me and the doc learning to grow at home. 
At the same time as I was doing the background research and development for this new show idea, I was also studying American history for my civics test. And American history is completely intertwined with the stories of its veterans. And it was through learning about America's history that I came to also learn about the epidemic of veteran suicide. Every year, 7,300 veterans take their own lives. That's an average of 20 a day, or a veteran dying every 72 minutes. The sheer scale of it all hit me like a truck. And on my swearing in day, I knew I had to postpone my identity and do something about it. I one of the first on behalf of USCIS to to uh, congratulate you on becoming citizens today, everybody. Congratulate. And that's how the simple, cheap idea that was what learns how became something deeper and much more important. Nice to hear people having fun. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, so I mean that the hot trays. And what's interesting too about this room is just like the room that I showed you where we had the Kanban, mm. this room is also on an interesting schedule except we use tags. So we'll know how long something's spent in here or how long, how much time something's spent in here and kind of rotate it based on that. We've got our moving time so by straight down to the side. Having pumped the brakes on my own project, I determined to get as much riding experience as I could while I visited all the locations I'd need on film to tell even our tiny part of the veteran's story. Right, rock and roll. But the first stop I needed to make was Monster Gardens itself. This is, after all, their channel and their filming budget. They loved it so much that someone from management even agreed to an on-camera interview for the first time. First of all, I guess introduce yourself and who are you? My name's Heather. I'm co-founder of Monster Gardens and I'm the CFO. I run a lot of the day-to-day -day operations. Uh -huh. So how long has the company been around? Since 2010. 2010, okay. So, but that wasn't at this location, was it? No, no. We started in a small warehouse with a couple offices. Uh -huh. Online, we figured we'd just service online uh -huh. and people started finding us. Oh. So we had a pretty pathetic little showroom built out of built in the offices uh -huh. because people showed up and they're like, oh, this is where we buy things. <laughs> Said, this is where we buy things. <laughs> then you moved here, what, three years ago? Six years ago. Six years ago. So yes. right, right. We've been in a bigger location with a real showroom for <laughs> six years.
tell me about the YouTube channel. I mean, what was the, the reasoning behind having a YouTube channel? So we started the YouTube channel because there was not a lot of education in our industry. Mm -hmm. um, we, if you looked around at that point in time... When you say education, what do you mean by education? People just didn't know how to... Yeah, there wasn't a resource for somebody who was starting to grow for the first time. Oh, right. okay. There was pretty much nothing out there. Um, so we went ahead and started a channel, um, figured we could be the ones who educated everyone. Right. And we've grown to be probably the largest online or the largest YouTube education center for hydroponic growing. Right. Before 2018, did you ever thought of doing a complete grow show? We had talked about it. Yeah. We've, we've definitely had some conversation, probably more so through you, Matt, coming up with our ideas. Um, so we had talked about kind of having a start to finish. It had come up, we'd never really went too far with it. So that was when I started researching, developing that idea and turned up and told you about veterans. And one of the, one of the big surprises for me, if I'm honest, was, was just how quickly uh, all of the Monster Gardens crew got on board with it. Um, is there a reason for that? I mean, do you have any history of veterans in, in, in in your family or your in your friends or anything? Um, no, I really don't know a lot of veterans. Mm. I do have an uncle when I was very young, so I did not know him super well, that had served in Vietnam. Mm. He was a dentist and he was called over there to help in the medical the medical field mm -hmm. because from my understanding, they were very shorthanded. Right. Um, he saw, I'm sure he saw a lot of horrific things. Injuries being yeah. yeah, injuries. I don't even know if, if I could comprehend what is probably seen in that situation. But um, he came back, went back to dentistry. Um, he had a lot, of, I know he had a really hard time coping. He would end up using nitrous oxide to try to relax. And I don't know if he felt he had no other option or if he just, there. I don't think there was a lot out there for him. Mm -hmm. Um, he was in a very conservative religious area, mm -hmm. and I and so I don't. I'm assuming cannabis wasn't an option, even though it was what the 70s. So. Yeah, I don't think cannabis was an option, right. even in the 70s, right. in that area. Right. Um, but anyway, he he did have a point where he ended up overdoing it, and it killed him. He was 36 years old, oh, left shit. behind a wife, five children, and that was the end of his story. With the blessing of Monster Gardens, it gave me access to all of their resources, like extra cameras, their context directory, and of course, all the gardening expertise I could possibly need. The next question mark was getting hold of the equipment itself and building a custom garden for our student. So I wrote to a bunch of Monster Garden suppliers. Everyone I contacted offered help of some kind, but one offer stood out as it meant getting almost everything we'd need from just one source. That source was Hawthorne Gardening Company. Our contacts over there said simply that they would supply us with whatever we needed. A tent, a lamp, pots, saucers, it didn't really matter. Whatever was in their catalogue, we could pick from. And with local suppliers Nectar for the Gods and Green Grow covering our students' soil and amendment needs respectively, we had a complete garden. Now we just needed genetics and of course a student. And it was there where my biggest challenge lay. You see, I'm not a veteran and I was very aware that I needed to work with a veteran group in this enterprise. Preferably someone who could be a guide to the guarded world of the US veteran. And thankfully, I had a name. One of the experts in the store had told me of a contact they once met. A chap based in Marin called Aaron Augustus. 
who is a Cannabis for Veterans advocate. A quick internet search found his website, the Veterans Cannabis Group. And after a few email and phone call exchanges, we met. After meeting, Aaron agreed to be my veteran liaison and to help me connect to the world of the veteran. But due to our intense working schedules, we'd been working together for over six months before we managed to arrange an interview. Tell me about the situation. What got you in? Why did you start Veterans Cannabis Group? So the, the issue that we're seeing with cannabis is um, the access for veterans to get medicine, to get medicinal cannabis, to, to help treat the symptoms of PTSD. It's not a cure-all, and that's not what we're trying to say. It's just there to help. It should be a tool recognized by the pharmacies, by the doctors. We need to study it. There is a lack of studying. There's a lack of access. The veterans should be able to get all their medical treatment and care and medicine through the VA medical system. Yeah. But they're not able to do that because cannabis is a Schedule One drug. The VA is a federal entity, and therefore it's not available for the veteran, the VA doctors to issue to veterans um, because it's not recognized. It, it's a Schedule One drug and it has no medicinal purposes on the Schedule One, which means that it's not a medicine, according to the federal government. Right. And that's a problem. I was in Iraq in 2003, and it was scary, it was crazy. Uh, my unit got hit with IEDs, rockets being fired in your camp. You know, all these things, living in that situation is, is stressful. Uh, and then having to take someone's life would even be another, whole another probably set of issues and things for me to deal with, so I'm fortunate. I'm thankful that it didn't happen yet. So how does cannabis help mm -hmm. help you deal with those issues? I was introduced to cannabis before I was in the military, uh, when I was younger, teenager. Um, when I was in the military, I, I did not use cannabis. Obviously, you're active duty, you get drug tested. Um, but when I came back, I think that I was fortunate to be from Northern California because I was using cannabis um, Pretty, pretty heavily when I first got back from Iraq and learned later that I was actually uh, just treating my symptoms of PTSD. Right. I went from Iraq to California being a civilian in about 45 days. After five and a half years of active duty military service. No wind down time, no? No. no. So needless to say that the transition, um, there wasn't like counseling, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't prepared. I, I think I really underestimated. Uh, going to Iraq because I didn't process it until 10 years later. So you have to learn, uh, the VA, this is, you have to learn through the counseling is learn how to deal with, with uh, your triggers or learn grounding methods or the different ways to be healthy. And cannabis is one of those ways that can help you immediately if you're being anxious or a lot of, or in you know, big crowds, things like that. Um, it can actually calm you down and relax you, right? Um, it can make you think about other things. You know, sometimes so it's a tool. You use it as something to yeah. help you. Yeah, it's a tool. It's a tool. Um, you have to go to counseling. You have to make sure your biochemistry is correct. Um, you have to get exercise and eat. Family is is important. Have that support if you if you have that. You know, friends, all that stuff. But it, it the the reason why we're we're really focused on cannabis is not toxic like uh, some opiates can be or the, the withdrawal if you stop smoking cannabis your body's not going to physically withdraw so what, what's the VA's counter solution at the moment they can't give you cannabis what do they give you so the VA doctors only have a handful of other medications that they can prescribe for PTSD uh, SSRIs or opiates is another medicine for pain or for other types of sleeping. Well, the problem that we're seeing with, with veterans and giving them pain, pain medications like opiates is that those become addictive, tolerances go up, go up, um, then the VA will just cut you off. So if you're a, a veteran now and you're curious about cannabis, what what should you do? I mean, what are the barriers to entry? What's What are the major challenges facing it? Well, the, the, okay, so first I can think about if you don't live in California or a state that uh, has a medical marijuana program, then you're going to be, you can be prosecuted for even possession of it or for growing your own medicine, right. for even having a joint, right. get thrown into jail. Right, so that's right away. They don't away. care if you're a serviceman or not. It doesn't matter. Not, no, right. right away. Totally. Schedule one, illegal. So, but a lot of veterans aren't using it because they're not, they're told not to, or they're also under the impression that they'll lose their VA benefits. 
and that's huge. People that are relying on these pain medications for other types of injuries. Um, that's a huge fear. It's it a huge fear if your lifeline is the, the VA. You know, not just the money that if you're service connected, but the, the medical treatment, the medical system, right? The VA medical system is, is a lifelong and inherited relationship with the VA and the veteran. Um, that we sign up for and that the VA has said that they're obligated to do. With the Veterans Cannabis Group as a full partner, I finally felt like we were getting somewhere. Surely it wouldn't be hard to find someone to give a complete indoor garden to, in exchange for filming them learning to grow their own medical cannabis. Oh, how wrong I was. After a six-week campaign across Facebook, Instagram and huge email blasts, we had nothing to show for it. Aaron felt we needed to meet and explain the idea to a group of veterans in person. And he knew just who to connect me with. founded Vets Connect, right? Yes, uh, my wife and I actually were doing this for way over 20 years, but we were doing it out in the parks and on the street corners before we got this set up in the Vets building. Right. We're a 501c3 nonprofit, plus we're incorporated. Wow. All of our staff is not paid, none of us get paid. Every penny we bring in from doing events that we do goes to veterans in Sonoma County. Right. We have maybe anywhere from 10 to 15, maybe 20 providers come in to help veterans with whatever they need. We have food available, uh, sleeping bags, anything a veteran might need out here until we can find housing for them. Right. We provide. Everything. From Everything. Are there other groups like this or is this unique? No, we're the only group in the United States that does what we do. 10 years ago, set it up because our government wasn't doing what they should have done for us. Right. So we decided to start our own organization to make this work to help our brother and sister vets, whether they be homeless, whether they have a home, whether they're, it doesn't matter how much money they have. If they need help, we help. I'm also the Disabled American Veterans Chapter Service Officer, along with the commander of their Chapter 48 here in Santa Rosa. Wow. We meet here in this room every once a month, and the same thing goes on. We have a, a good group of uh, volunteers that uh, they go out and they collect on Monday night, he goes and gets donuts from a donut shop to bring in to, so the people in here can have donuts and coffee in the morning. Right. Uh, we do a lot of out, uh, events in the public. Right. This is how we earn our money. Right. To help our veterans to either pay for, sometimes we've paid for rent, PG&E bills, water bills, vehicles. We have job ev jobs available through several of, of our website. Excellent, excellent. So you can go on that site, you can donate to us. Uh, so it, it's really important. We're starting to get a few newer ones. It used to be the, a lot of them were Vietnam and Korea vets. Mm -hmm. But since the uh, Gulf War started, they we're starting to get what we call younger. Right. Most of those people now are 50, 60 years old. Mm -hmm. And the younger ones coming in out of Afghanistan and Iraq right now are right. It took us as Vietnam vets 40 years before we finally decided there was something wrong with us. Right. It wasn't the world that was messed up, which it is, but we were messed up too with our post-traumatic stress from what we went through. Right. So it takes a long time to run through this. It takes a lot of effort on your part, psych doctors, stuff like this. You just have to do it because there's too much stuff in our brain that keeps us awake and keeps us agitated. Right. You, do you use cannabis yourself or? Oh yes. You do? Oh yeah. I did four tours in Vietnam up in the rivers. Four? Yeah. Wow. I did seven years active duty. Uh, I was at critical rate so they wasn't going to let me out in my four years so I just said fine I'll ship over for two and show me the money. Right. Right. So I was six years at sea. Uh, amphibious Navy is what they call brown water. That's in next to the shore up right. in the rivers. Right. 
18 years old, 19 years old, and you know, hey, we were invincible. But the effects of the war it wears on you once you get back. It's almost like uh, 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 you're still a POW. Yes. You're a POW to the experience. That's right. Of the war. And so really what we're talking about here is trying to help veterans right. to get away from the war. We can't get it away from them, but we can show them how to deal with it. Right. When this issue comes up, to, to back away from it. Right. Uh, it's an issue that some of them go to drugs, alcohol, self-medication. It doesn't work. Like I tell them, that's fine, but guess what? You get alcohol, you get drunk, but that suitcase is still right here beside right. you that goes with you. You pack that with you everywhere you go, unless you sit down and talk and be honest about it and get the secret, we call it a secret, out right. of what we witnessed, what we did. That's why we don't talk to civilians, I call them, because right. they don't understand. You know, uh, PTSD, in a, to make it simple, is a normal reaction to an abnormal situation. Mm -hmm. Not everybody goes through that. Yes, car wrecks, plane crashes will give you PTSD, short term. Right. But we did it for minimum of four and some eight to ten years or more. Right. And that's why it doesn't go away. The team at VetConnect let me host a recruitment table at the next week's event, and on a day I was desperately hoping we'd get some bites. It was already June, and if we didn't find a student soon, I may have to abandon the project, having put six months of time, effort, and not to mention budget into it, with nothing yet to show. However, ten minutes after I started setting up my computer to show some footage, I noticed someone standing near my table. I looked up and my answer stood in front of me. Uh, I'm Al Duncan, U.S. Navy veteran. I joined the Navy in 1963 and I was uh, honorably discharged in 1969. I was a radio man in the amphibious forces. Coming up in episode two, we get to know our student Al while he gets to learn about strains Aaron sends me on a mission to get the lowdown on the medical and legal implications of medical cannabis for veterans. And after seven months in development, Vets Grow officially gets underway, thanks to a lot of hard work by Dark Heart Nursery and Harborside stepping up and agreeing to be our pickup point. And of course, hardcore security for making sure our clones got to Al in one piece. <laughs> <laughs>